In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May God bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, both now and forever into the age all ages, Amen. Uh, Christ is risen and ascended. As many of you know, we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Ascension uh, this last Thursday. And next Sunday, God willing, is the Feast of the Holy Pentecost. Um, and as you have been following with us these last few Sundays, um, the, the Sunday themes of the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection are always the same, um, regardless of what calendar day they fall on. Um, and as we have been saying, the main theme of the Holy 50 Days is the resurrection and the life. As the Lord said, I am the resurrection and the life. And we ha we're going towards the end of the story. Um, since, as you know, the Lord rose from the dead on Easter Sunday, and he stayed with his disciples for 40 days, teaching them about the kingdom of God um, and revealing to them many mysteries of the church uh, so that they could be prepared for the upcoming service, um, which started on the day of Pentecost. Um, and he ascended into the heavens on the 40th day and the 50th day, uh, he granted them uh, the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so what we need for um, our salvation and resurrection is the risen Lord and his Holy Spirit, um, who comes from God the Father. We need the Holy Trinity. And the seven weeks of the Great Lent, um, followed by Passion Week, in a sense, describe the the suffering and the death that the Lord experienced. But the seven weeks following that of the resurrection describe God as the life and the resurrection. Um, so this week, because we celebrated the ascension of the Lord, um, the theme is related to both the ascension and the victory. If you read, hopefully with your family, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, verses 22, 23 to 33, um, the Lord speaks about his upcoming ascension. Um, and actually, it's, he, he speaks about his departure, because this was the passage that he, uh, he the, the church shows us of his teaching right before his crucifixion. Um, and so his crucifixion um, and his ascension are linked, of course, with the resurrection as well. But um, the Lord says in the gospel of today, these things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace because they're going to um, endure a lot of suffering and tribulation, not only in the period after the, of the passion of the Lord, but all Christians um, will suffer tribulation. And that's why he says, in the world, you will have tribulation. Every Christian and every person has some suffering that they have to endure. But for the Christian, he or she um, is called to rejoice, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. So by his death, he conquered death. By his victory, we are saved. We trust in his victory, which grants us peace. Um, regardless of the tribulation that we are uh, to face. Um, and the Lord says in the Gospel of today, again, I leave the world and go uh, to the Father. So the theme of the state is departure, but also when the Lord leaves, he doesn't leave, he leave, when he leaves us in the flesh, he doesn't leave us in the spirit. Just like when any one of our beloved ones depart in, from the body, they are with us in the spirit. And this is actually a more intimate and a more powerful unity some, um, oftentimes. Um, it depends on how much we are close to God and to the Spirit. So what are the different types of victory that the, the Christian can and should experience? Um, so the first victory is the victory over sin. As uh, St. Augustine describes, nevertheless, brethren, we must know that with Christ, um, ascends neither pride, avarice, nor impurity. Meaning, when Christ ascends and when we ascend with him, there's no sin attached to it. Um, so if we want to sin, it says none of our vices, none of our sins will ascend with our healer. So if we desire to ascend with him, we must 
desist or stop sin and evil. Okay, um, uh, just like he says, light cannot commune with darkness. Um, the second thing we have, if we have victory over sin, we have victory over evil. Um, as St. Paul says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't fight against each other. We don't fight against the things of this world, but against the things of darkness. For the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, the devil and all his uh, fallen angels, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Um, and this is actually something we uh, pronounce on the day of our baptism, or our parents if we were children, our parents would do this for us when we renounce Satan three times, facing him um, with all courage and boldness and hatred of all the things um, that have to do with evil. <clears throat> um, and even though we still struggle against sin and we still struggle against evil in our bodies, we know that because we have the victorious Lord with us, eventually um, we will overcome. Um, so this has to be our confidence and our faith and our hope and our trust. <clears throat> because if we doubt this, then we may not be victorious. Um, because, again, our trust is in him. Um, and that's why the next victory is the victory over anxiety or over worry or over trouble. Um, because the Christian should not be shaken too much, even though we are tossed to and fro like in, in the waves of the sea, but we have the power to walk over on water. Um, and uh, St. Augustine also says, our Savior has ascended into heaven, beloved brethren, but let us therefore be not be troubled on the earth. May our minds be there, and here will be peace. So the Christian who is at peace is the one who is confident and whose mind is thinking not about the worldly problems, but about the heavenly peace. About, um, for example, we had a few people uh, pass away, unfortunately, in this time. Um, and uh, I was with a family yesterday, and they were comforting each other, saying, remember where he is and not your problem. Um, and so when we remember the person and how joyful and how happy and how victorious they, they are at the moment with God, then we won't be as troubled when we think about our difficulty here on earth. Um, so the person who ascends with their mind first is not anxious, is not worried. Um, so that's why, sorry, St. Augustine uh, continues by saying, in the meanwhile, we shall ascend with a Christian heart, that when the day of his promise will have come, when he calls us to be with him in, in, in the resurrection, we shall follow also in body. So we ascend with our mind, like Abuna in the liturgy says, lift up your hearts, right? We also lift, and one, um, one priest in Arabic, I think the, the terminology is very similar. He says, lift up your minds. Right? So we ascend with our mind and with our heart. And also later, on that last day, we will ascend with him in body. Um, but first, our minds have to be fixed in heaven. Our, our heart has to be in the heavenly things, not on the worldly things. Like uh, uh, Father Dan was mentioning last night in the study of James. Um, so the last thing is the victory over doubt. Um, and... Um, Again, in the, in the Epistle of St. James, hopefully we'll get to this uh, next week. Um, St. James writes, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? It takes a while. If you've ever grown a, a plant or a flower or a fruit, um, you have to wait patiently, as St. James says. Waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. So, um, there, there needs to be a lot of time and, and effort invested in, in this. Um, same thing with the coming of the kingdom. We have to be patient. It will take years and decades and maybe centuries for us to attain the kingdom of heaven um, in the second coming. But he says, you also be patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Here, the term at hand means... Um, 
with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Um, so St. James is, is, is giving that mentality that even though it might be a hundred or a thousand years from now, um, we have to live as if it is tomorrow or today even. Um, <clears throat> and, and this attitude makes us ready like the victorious soldier who is ready at all times um, because our departure is at hand, whether it is today, um, God give you long life or in a hundred years. Um, but when we feel that the coming of the Lord is at hand, we are patient in the midst of our um, difficulties here on earth. Um, as the psalmist uh, writes, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. We have to wait patiently uh, for the Lord. Um, just like the disciples were asked to wait patiently those 10 days before the coming of the Holy Spirit. The more patiently we wait, and the more we wait, the greater the gift. And as the fathers say, the greater we value the gift. Um, that's why one reason why God doesn't answer our prayers immediately, because he wants us to wait. He wants us to wait expectantly for it. And once we get it, um, we treasure it more. Um, so the, the victory of our Lord gives us victory over doubt and gives us a peace uh, that surpasses all understanding. Um, <clears throat> and um, just some, a couple quotes from, from the fathers about this, um, and we'll conclude. Um, so St. Athanasius talks about uh, how we endure troubles um, by remembering the victory of, of the Lord. He says, whenever we have suffering and troubles and hard work, the enemy, the devil, comes along and does everything he can to make us fall. Because the, the devil knows that through this suffering, we will get rewarded if we respond in the proper way. He says, but the person who is in Christ can be victorious by setting himself against the opposition. From the day of our baptism, we know the enemy and we... Um, proclaim that we will fight against the enemy. Meeting anger or responding to anger with long suffering. Respond to insults with meekness or humility or silence. Respond to sin or vice with virtue, good works. This is overcoming evil with good. Then he can finally triumphantly exclaim, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and in all things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. This is the grace of the Lord. So the grace of the Lord gives us the victory to be able to respond to a sin or a temptation or um, a, a suffering with patience, with love, with joy, with humility, um, with virtue. Um, so when we are overcoming evil with good, then we know the grace of the Lord is with us, and then we have the real victory already with us. Um, and even if we don't experience this victory immediately, as St. Athanasius says in the, the first part, we have to have long suffering. We have to be patient until God gives us the victory. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, another nice quote, uh, from St. Basil the Great, he says, um, whoever stayed at home doing nothing at harvest time and managed to fill his arms with bundles of corn. Does that make sense? If you stay home, not in the quarantine, but imagine a person who doesn't work at all and expect food on the table. This is what he's saying. Who has gathered grapes from the vine he has not planted or worked hard for? How do you get food um, from a tree that you didn't plant? You'll be taking from someone else's. Um, those who have worked receive the fruits. So when we struggle in the spiritual life or even in the physical life, there is a fruit, there is a benefit, there is a reward. Um, and he says, those who are victorious are crowned. That's the reward, the, the crown of life um, or the heavenly kingdom. And who, and who would begin to consider crowning anyone who had not given ready, who had not even got ready to face his opponent? Um, you can't crown a person who's ready to run the race before he has even run it. Um, so he, that's why he says, we must not neglect even the smallest details of our instructions that are given in the Bible, but carry out our orders to the letter. For it is said, blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds not doing anything, but so doing. 
we have to do. <laughs> um, and so the victorious one is the person who doesn't give up, um, regardless of what is in front of them. And, and even if, if it's a hundred meter dash or if it's the marathon, we continue until the end. Um, and it's not always going to be a downhill race. Um, but the victorious one is the one who endures until they are crowned. Um, and so this endurance is, is the one where we don't give up. We never uh, give up. Um, <clears throat> uh, also, St. John Chrysostom talks about the ascension of the victorious. So this is the theme of today where we're, Christ says, I have overcome the world and he ascended. And also when we endure, we will be victorious when, when he raises us up with him on the last day. So St. John Chrysostom says, we who seemed unworthy of earth are now raised to heaven and we don't deserve anything. There's no union of darkness with light. Um, and before Christ, there was no unity of heaven and earth or the body and um, God, um, the things of the, the world and the things of heaven. But when Christ came and took flesh and united his uh, divinity with the body that he took from, from St. Mary, this is the beauty of the incarnation. This unity shows that God is planning and desires and can unite man with God, right? We don't deserve heaven, but God through his incarnation and through his ascension is saying, no, I planned and I want man to be united with me. Um, <clears throat> and so he says, we who are unworthy of earthly dominion, we're not even worthy to uh, be president or to be a king or to have um, a kingdom here on earth. Most of us are not even, even the people who, who have that power don't deserve it. But he says, we who are not worthy of that stuff, we have been raised to the kingdom on high. We become uh, princes and princesses of the king of kings. We have ascended higher than heaven because there's, this word means, there's multiple layers of heaven. But um, like we're saying, we're, in this sense, you're saying we ascended higher than the sky, higher than the atmosphere. Um, to the throne of God, have become to occupy the throne of the king. This is a great blessing that man does not deserve, but God desires to give to those whom he loves um, and who love him. Um, so finally, <clears throat> St. Augustine says, um, we who uh, we celebrate today, uh, when he's talking about here, this is one of his sermons from the Ascension Feast. He said, we celebrate today the solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord, by celebrating this feast devoutly, by making sure we, uh, we are taking, uh, not taking this feast for granted, uh, virtuously, faithfully, and piously, we ascend with him and are, have our hearts above. This is the ascension of the heart, like we were saying before. For the resurrection of the Lord is our hope, and his ascension is our glorification. Uh, very beautiful words um, by... Uh, by our holy fathers on this on uh, this very holy days. Um, so just to summarize, um, by his death he conquered death. By his victory we are saved. By his victory he gives us um, the ability to overcome sin, to overcome evil, to overcome worry, to overcome doubt, to overcome every weakness eventually. But we have to be patient and allow his grace to work in us. Um, if we don't succeed at the first time or the millionth time, we get up. Um, the righteous person may fall seven times, but by the grace of God, they, they are raised seven times. Um, I was just reading, uh, uh, as a side note, how in order for the Lord to ascend, he, is, he descended a few times and he ascended uh, also a few times. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, he descended the first time when he took flesh, right? He came from heaven to earth, right? He, he uh, uh, took off of his glory as, as the fathers describe us when he took the form of man in humility. And as St. Uh, Paul says, uh, that was one of the first descensions, right? He also descended into the water in baptism. 
he also descended into Hades after he was crucified on the cross. But when, when did he rise? He, he ascended to the cross, um, which some people look as a descent, but no, this is the throne of God. Um, he rose from the dead. He ascended into the heavens. Um, so the Lord did a lot of going down and a lot of rising up, right? Um, and we as Christians, we have this up and down as well. And so the down is not always a bad thing, um, but it depends on how we see it and how we take advantage of it and how we um, use it as an opportunity to be closer to God and to ask for his strength. Um, may the Lord grant us the beauty and the power and the, of the Spirit um, so that whether we rise or descend, we're with Him. That's the main thing. Whether we live or die, we are with the Lord, as St. Paul says. Um, and glory be to Him, now and forever, to the age of all ages. Um, so, uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions, or if uh, Abuna, if you wanted to add anything, or any announcements. Um, uh, just to let you know, as we, we will be, as, as we have said, we will be um, notifying you 